Hello. Let me play my little music. Y'all know I can't dance, right? I'm not saying anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited to be here today on Chit Chat with the Journey Sisters. I'm your hostess with the mostest. I'm your girl, Janelle. And I have with me today the one and only Miss Alicia Alexander, Miss Forgiveness Coach. Yes, 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 in the house. You, just in case you have not seen the post, guys. So this is, drum roll, <laughs> one year. One year, Alicia. How do you feel? Amazing, Janelle. Amazing. I can't find a better word than amazing. Amazing sums up everything. But I feel amazing. Well, that is so exciting because, ladies, we are going to we're going to get into Miss Alicia's vision. We're going to get into yeah. her mind to see how she has changed and transformed on this journey from a year ago to right now. So today you are tuned in to Chick Chat with the Journey Sisters. And like I said, I am yours truly. I am Janelle, I am a life fulfillment coach. So I help people uncover their purpose um, and live a fulfilled life, I'm walking in their destiny. I am excited to be here today and with me, is the visionaire of the Chip Chat with the Journey Sisters. And her name is Miss Alicia. Miss Alicia, just in case it's their first time coming on the show today, please, please tell them who you are. Thank you, Janelle. I am Alicia Alexander, creator of Chit Chat with the Journey Sisters. And this program was birthed from a place of necessity. I am your forgiveness coach. I work with individuals, especially women, who at some point in their life experience a traumatic situation that caused them to lose their voice. And along the journey, probably felt like there was no way out. There was nobody experiencing what I'm experiencing. Well, I am that voice to let you know that you are not alone. And one of the biggest things that will definitely get you through your journey is forgiveness. I am your forgiveness coach, Alicia Alexander. All right, well, what an amazing introduction, Alicia. So what I wanna do as we celebrate one year, I want, I, I want you guys to first of all, go ahead and share this video. There is a link on my Facebook. Um, there is a link in Alicia's profile on Facebook uh, where you can go ahead and share. But I want you to share this video. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to share this video because today, like I mentioned in, uh, we mentioned in the flyer that we have some giveaways. And in order for you to participate in the giveaway, you've got to participate in today's show. And we want to hear from you. We want to know how you have been following this journey with the Chick Chat Sisters. We wanna know how your life has been transformed, how you have been motivated. You're like, you know what? I've been watching your show. I've been so inspired because we've been hearing so many amazing testimonies, Alicia. Testimonies yes, yeah, coming yes. from people that have been watching your show and people that have been on your show. Yes. Just tell us a little bit about what they've been saying. You know, when I when I started this program, it was to minister to the world. It was a situation where I had to step out of my comfort zone. But I told myself that I can and I will, which I did. And uh, it is such a gratifying feeling to know that something that was said on the program had influence and in at least one person. You know, I had a young lady that called and said, you know, I, I was sexually abused. Wow. And uh, 
I was so ashamed to let anybody know because I thought it was my fault. I thought that fingers would be pointed at me. I thought that I wouldn't have any, you know, I couldn't walk down the street after revealing it. And hearing you say that publicly to the world without shame gave me that confidence and that reassurance that I am not to be blamed. There's no shame in what took place, especially when you had absolutely no contribution to it. So the feedback has been positive. Um, there are individuals that look forward to the program that think that what we're talking about and the topics that we're touching on are absolutely necessary, especially because in a society like this or in our society that mm -hmm. people are so quick to point a finger without knowing the story. People are so ready to judge and you tend mm -hmm. to want to live in a box because you don't want to be judged. And there's no shame in the game. There's absolutely none, especially if you know you're walking on the right path. Look, so I am just excited about your transformation, Alicia. And you know, I'm going to pick on you a little bit, honey, because listen, guys, you know who running the show today is your hostess with the most is your girl, Lady Soul, a.k.a. Janelle, your life fulfillment coach. Um, I want to make sure that I see Jay Cassandra Johnson. Happy anniversary. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please share this video. Please share this video. I got some goodies that I want to give away, and I need to give it away to a couple of people. So make sure share this video, guys. Share this video because this has been a life transforming journey, Miss Alicia. The topic yeah. today is I am thankful. I am thankful. And there are so many things that I'm thankful for. But what I want to say right now, I remember you coming to me and it must have been over a year ago, telling me that you were thinking about doing this show. And I said, okay. You were shy, <laughs> reserved, and introvert. I'm like, okay, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm, it's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm going to help you in the best way that I possibly can. So how has your life changed? Um, I've watched you transform before my eyes. I've watched you, I mean, become vocal and just become radical about your purpose. So take us on that journey from, you know, how you were when you first started to where you are right now. And what can you contribute to that success or that growth in your life? Jenna, you, know, you are... You are so, you know, I, I'm speechless. I don't know where to begin. I, like you say, I'm an introvert, very shy. Was an introvert. Was. I was an introvert. Yeah. I am very shy. It was. was. I am shy. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of individuals who are familiar with me because I played a steel band. Mm. And one of the reasons why I enjoy playing the pan is because it does not involve talking. I could just play, focus on what I'm doing, get on and get off. And I knew that in my heart, I had a story to tell and a story that was burning. And I could not figure out how to tell that story. Internally, I had a voice. Internally, I had this passion. And I also had a passion to help. Then, you know, I'm like, how can I help? How can I get it out there? And I look at other speakers and the, I'm always telling myself, I could do this. I could do this, but the words would not. My lips won't part for me to put the words. I was introduced to Dr. Nadine Collins just a little over a year ago, and I found the courage to tell her my story. And Dr. Collins started me on my journey, my journey as to how to become a motivational speaker. How can I put my information together to make it meaningful? But then... I also had a situation last year where I had COVID. And with having COVID and being isolated for over two months, I had no choice but to have that connection with God, to really sit and have that deep connection with him, trying to decide what direction am I going? I have a story to tell. Am I gonna take this story to my grave or am I gonna try and help somebody? You know, the, grave have a, the graveyard has a lot of people who have never told a story. 
And I did not want to be a statistics. And I, so I decided, you know what, there's some way, somehow I have to get it out. And uh, God gave me that vision, chit chat with the Journey Sisters. Like you, I did not know how it was going to work. But I stepped out of my comfort zone because, again, being an introvert, not speaking in public, how am I going to bring a story to an audience when I don't even like talking? <laughs> you are saying what you're saying, Alicia, is is one of the biggest problems that a lot of mm -hmm. people face. Number one, excuses. Yes. Everything that you needed to have a successful show like you have right now, you've always had God, always had it inside you. Yes. But instead of using what he gave you, you just said, you know what? I can't do this. I'm this. I'm that. I'm that. Um, it's not like Moses. I can't even speak, Lord. I mean, why are you going to send me before the king? I can't even, you know, I can't even speak. But when you are willing to step out of your comfort zone, okay, that word for, is, is for somebody today. Yes. When you are willing to step out of your comfort zone, then your life could experience the change that you so desperately desire and the change that you need. Yes. I remember, you know, trying Jane L getting ready for the first show. I went up the stairs, I came down the stairs. I went up the stairs, I came down the stairs. I did a couple of push-ups. I did some squats and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get it together. The only thing I didn't do was have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you did it, honey. I wanted, I did everything in order to try and be so tired and be so exhausted. And then I try to comfort myself by saying, okay, I'm talking to the computer. I'm not, nobody can see me. So I'm going to be okay. But after that first program, the feedback was overwhelming. And I realized, you know what? I had too many excuses. And when you release or when you release that energy and you release that story for the first time, it's like a burden removed. And I've, I've been running since. Honey, I, I don't know how to shut up now. I don't know how to keep Listen, quiet now. I am telling you, if you guys know this lady, and I know, who was that, Miss Johnson? You was on saying something. Uh, she said something about somebody showing off. Yeah. I don't know. You talking about me, Miss J. Cassandra? Are oh, you talking about Miss Alicia? Anyway, Alicia, of course, like I said, she was shy and now she's very. Listen, I want you guys to know. Just I'm gonna give you a little side note, okay? So last month was my birthday. And this month is Alicia's birthday. So not only are we celebrating her first year anniversary, but we are celebrating um her birth month. Yes. And we're gonna be celebrating her all month long. And the reason why I love the name that you chose for the show today, because Miss Elisa, I'm so thankful for you. I am very thankful. Of course, I'm thankful for so many different things, but I am so thankful for you. You know, if there is someone that I can call and hang up on and throw a tantrum, throw a fit, I don't feel like talking, stop talking to me kind of thing. It's going to be on Miss Alicia. And we just have our little moments and it's like, okay, okay, you know, don't, don't speak to me that way. And just because she's like three days older than me, we always <laughs> don't. Okay, okay. But I want you to know when you're talking about a ride or die, a friend that'll stick with you to the end for real, for real, that's Miss Alicia. That is Miss Alicia. So, Miss Alicia. So I'm pretty sure that it was not all roses and, and, and sweet smelling daisies. Um, there must have been a time when you felt like giving up. Like, were there times where you felt like this, that I can't even do this? And if there were those times, take us through what got you out of that funk mode where you were able to you'd say, you know what? I made this commitment and I'm going to stick through. Because you better tell the truth to the people now because, you know, I know. So you know, it's all about transparency. It's all about yes. transparency. Yeah, yes. you know, you're right. It's not all roses. And uh, the biggest stumbling block that I've had is, you know, a lot of times we we think that or we perceive that family is the one that should support you. 
I know that's a that's a mis, big con, misconception. Family is supposed to support you. They're going to be there to back you up, and they're going to be there. And my biggest obstacle along this journey was when I mentioned one of my stories to a family member, and the family member said, "Why you need to talk about this now? Why you need to, you know, what what are you saying? How is it going to help anybody? It's been quiet for so long, you know." Why do you think you have a voice? You're fine, right? You're living life. And I took it to heart for a quick 20 seconds. <laughs> I took it to heart for a quick 20 seconds. And one of the reasons why I did that is because I have noticed, and especially again, back during my COVID time when I had absolutely nothing to do. You know, a lot of times you take vacation and you go on a trip and you have to pay for this and you visit in this park and that park. Or even if you take a vacation and stay home, there's always something to do. During my COVID quarantine, I had absolutely nothing to do. No, I didn't have to take my son to school. I didn't have to go on vacation. You know, there was nothing to do, no shopping, anything. There was nobody here to bother me. Mm -hmm. And I had that opportunity to really sit down, lay down, as a matter of fact, and reflect, regroup, reconnect and make a decision to move forward. And so when what was said to me, when, you know, the conversation I had with my family member, it lasted, the, the, the down feeling lasted 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Because everything that I've been through, as dramatic as they may have seemed, whatever hiccups life might have presented, they were all building blocks. Right. Blended, building blocks that were making me stronger for a moment like this. And so not to say that I don't have feelings and emotion, but when anything is being thrown at me, I am ready to come back because I know who I serve. Now, again, quite, you know, I, I am sympathize with those who have losses from the COVID experience. But I, my experience taught me that I have a connection and I have a work to do. And so every time I'm in a situation where I feel like I'm being beaten down, it's again for me to reflect and say, I have a work to do, Lord. I know you got something for me to do. I know you want me to talk to somebody. I know you want me to share something. I know you want me to be a shoulder. Not that I don't need a shoulder, but every situation that I have been through and every individual that I've been, I've been in contact with or encounter with, have taught me something. A lot of times we look at bad at situations that take place or hiccups in our life and we look at them as being a bad thing, mm -hmm. not realizing we need to look for the lessons in them. Mm -hmm. And the lessons in them have taught me to be stronger, to keep moving on. And so, yes, there, was, there were times when things were said to me about this show, but yet at the same time, because I've been, I've been through it, I've learned from it, Mm -hmm. And I'm growing, and I have a story to tell. I have a life to live. I have lives to touch. That no matter what is being said, I'm not backing down now. I don't That's serve it. them. I serve him, not them. They don't wake me up it, tomorrow morning. In it. Right. And but when in individuals can reach out to you and say, listen, Alicia, what you said, even if it was just one word, intentional, forgiveness, mm. Make, mm. Even just one word make a difference. I'm, 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 I'm game. I'm, you can't stop me. Yeah, you can't. You're, she's unstoppable. <laughs> I love it. So, so what we're saying to you today, you may have a dream. You may have a vision. It may be something that the Lord has placed inside your heart. And right now, um, we're almost, I can't believe it, Alicia. We are, and it's, it's October already, like yeah. November, December. We, we're at the end of the year. And there are so many people that have these New Year's resolution and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And now we're in the 10th month and they still haven't done it. And I remember you taking that bold step and actually doing it. And that's one of the things that I'm very, very proud of. The fact that you took that step and you did it. So Ms. Alicia, so for people that don't know your story, they are on here for the first time and they don't know what do you mean by finding your voice? Um, can you just let them know a little bit, like take them on your testimonial journey? Um, why are you thankful? I mean, I know we're thankful for life. We're thankful for our family, for our jobs and everything. But 
I believe this all ties in with why you're thankful. So take us on that journey for a minute. Let us know, um, you know, what you've been through and why you're so passionate about helping people find their voice. You know, as a, a lot of us have secrets in the closets. And mm. a lot of times things happen in our family and it's supposed to stay at home. It's, mm -hmm. it's you, you don't tell nobody what's going on here. Home is like, nothing is happening. And mm -hmm. um, I I was sexually abused, just to get straight to the point. I was sexually abused as a, as a child. I was a child that loved life, again, very quiet, loved life, had a very, has, not had, has, because my, my mom is still with me, has a very stern mother, had a very stern father, but somehow through the loophole, I was a victim. And I say was because I'm no longer a victim. I'm a thriver, I'm a survivor. And I was mm -hmm. sexually abused. And as a result of that, I lost my voice. I lost my voice, I lost my confidence. It, 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 it was horrific. In my mind as a child, it was horrific. And because of what took place, I did not want to get involved in anything that would have or dress any particular way that would have men looking at me. Mm. Because, you know, I got the feeling that they look at me, I'm a target. But at mm -hmm. the same time, I still had that feeling that everybody can look at me and see what took place. So it was a period of poor, pure taunting. It was dramatic. It was, it was mm -hmm. emotional. But through it all, you still had to keep that smile and that face and keep growing, making it through high school, making it through college. And I used to sit at the, um, I'm from Antigua. I used to sit next to the, air, the airport and there's a strip where you could watch the, the flights take off when they're leaving for the other countries. Mm -hmm. And I would sit there and watch these flights and wonder where they're going. And one of these days, I'm going to get on one of those flights. Mm. I don't care where it's going and I'm going to be free. I'm going to fly wow. and I'm going to tell my story and I'm going to find my voice and I'm going to, it's a whole lot I'm going to. Yeah. Without even revealing it. And so I kept quiet and I did what I thought was the best thing to do to keep me safe, to keep my family safe. I thought I did the best I could to live a fulfilling life. But the truth is we do live a life, you know, a good job, you, you get married, you have children, but if you have that internal pain and pain don't have to be physical, mm -hmm. if you have that internal emotional pain and never let it out, you're not truly living, you're just surviving. And like I mentioned on the show before, I had a lump in my chest that would not go away. I went to the doctor trying to figure out what it is. And until mm -hmm. I took it upon myself to call my abuser and forgive him, that was when that lump disappeared. And not even realizing all these years that it was stress. Wow. It was stress that was killing me slowly because I didn't have energy to do anything. The energy that people saw me doing things with was forceful energy because I forced myself to make mm -hmm. things happen. I forced myself to, to, to just live life, to, you know, to make everything seem, but I was dying slowly. Wow. Alicia, I mean, that's a lot of people's story. And like I mentioned earlier when we started, I knew I had a voice. Mm-hmm. But how was I gonna get it out without having wearing that shame and that 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 weight on my shoulder of you know everybody looking at me? And it took a lot of prayer. It took a lot of self love. I had to love myself first mm -hmm. in order to even try to bring it to the world. And that's been my journey, you know, sexual abuse, dealing with emotional pain, and realizing, hey, you know what? Am I going to allow that to take me out or what God has planned for me? Hey, listen, I'm telling you guys, I've watched Alicia and her story is so 
um, life transforming. My thing is if you don't if you don't know what somebody's going through or has been through, you you really can't judge a book by its cover. We got a couple of comments in the chat. Apostle Tracy Griffin is watching. Um, Stephanie, hey Stephanie. Stephanie says happy birthday, Alicia. Thank you. Um, and Miss Frances say that's my girl. Happy birth month. And in everything, give thanks. Yes, we are definitely giving thanks. We want you to share this video. We want you to share this video um, in the group chat. Share this video with as much people as possible. Good afternoon, Miss Francis. She said, happy anniversary. Jay Cassandra Johnson said, happy anniversary. Thank you guys so much for watching and being a part. I am definitely going to give away some trinkets today today but i need you to share this video i need you to comment and i need you to just you know just share some encouraging words let me know let miss alicia know why you are thankful um you know we are living this is 2021 last year we had absolutely no idea what was going to happen it was like COVID happened and the world shut down and social distancing. And it was like, oh my God, I know that I have never experienced anything like this before. You couldn't travel. Um, you know, everything was just, it, it just felt like we were going crazy. And God took us through that and he brought us to this place right now. And even in the midst of that, Miss Alicia had this vision. She had this vision to help others find their voice and she stepped out of her comfort zone no, no longer shy just wanted to just tell the whole world her story so there being a lot of people that we had on the show i mean we had what 12 11 guests yes 12 12 yeah. guests on this show already and each one of those women were amazing i'm not gonna stop calling names because you know i know i'm not gonna remember you guys remember my birthday was last month so charge it to my head, not my heart. But I know we've had um, some awesome, awesome, oh my God, Miss Alicia, this has been an amazing journey. And I know that next season, oh, are we I'm going it up. Go for season two? <laughs> yes. I am working on taking it to the next level. Listen, guys, listen, um, I'm excited. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about this transformation journey. But we've had a lot of amazing speakers and some of them may pop in today and you know just share a little wisdom nugget. I've learned so much and I've grown so much from where I was to where I am now. And just watching you, Alicia, I just want to cry. Don't, don't, don't. You know, Gina, some, a lot of times, a lot of times we we look at our bad situation and we take it as just being as it is. And uh, we don't look for the good in it. Mm. And we just want to be thankful for the blessings. We thank you for the food. We thankful for the job. That what the have what things. have you learned from this situation? And that's what I really wanted today to be about. What have you been through that you thought that that was it? That, that you know that was the end. I, I'm not gonna make it. I can't do this. But after mm. coming through it, you realize. You know, and looking back at it, it did me a lot of good. It did. Well, I, well you know, a lot of times when you're being handed things, especially children, our children these days are very ungrateful. They don't know how to be thankful for things because everything was handed to them. As you and I are a little older and a lot of things that we have, we had to work for. We had to get the grades, put in the hours, huh? Mm -hmm. we did. Had to put in the time in order to be rewarded. And when we do that, we realize, you know, when you do receive it, you are so thankful for it. Mm -hmm. You touch it more than anything else. And it's the same thing with our hiccups. When we've been through something, a, a sexual abuse, a bad marriage, a, 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 an accident, a breakup that we thought was going to go to the next level, domestic violence, mm. and you get out of it, and you get out of it stronger, and you look back and said, okay, you know what? It's making me stronger for the next situation. It happened. It shouldn't have happened, 
but I learned something. And I often say, had I not been through what I've been through, mm -hmm. where would I be? Probably, I don't know, 10 children somewhere. I keep saying 10 children because I wanted 10 children. <laughs> now, anybody that knows me know this. I wanted 10 children. You are on your own. You are on your own, honey. You are on your own. But I just wanted to go back here real quick. And there's some comments for you, Miss Alicia. Miss J. Cassandra says, part of who I am is keeping in mind of what would Wendy say? Yeah, they call you Wendy, all yes, right. He mm -hmm. said, I am supporting a supporter. Oh, I love it. I love it. Miss 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 Thomas, Miss um, Miss Johnson has been a rock. When I tell you that lady have been with me for years. Wow. When she not even knowing my story. And uh, again, sometimes we walk around with, with our burdens and we, because of what I've been through, I, I, I took on the role where I wanted to be a supporter for others. I'm here for you. I have a voice. I saw things differently. I'm not quick to judge. I'm not quick to point a finger because if you're acting a certain way, you've been through something. And Ms. Johnson and I became friends and she, was, she has been a rock. No matter what direction I want to go in, She's right there. Alicia, as she just said, Wendy, you ready? You doing what? I'm right there. I'm right there for you. And I wow. absolutely love her and her support. And, and it's so important to have um, good, positive people in your circle. On this journey, I heard a man of God say on, I want to say it was Friday morning, I listened to the pastor of the Greater Atlanta Church um, at 7 o'clock. He has prayer from 7 to 8. Um, in the mornings and he was praying Alicia and he was talking about, he said in this season, um, um, when, it, you know, we have an assignment and we have so much that God has called us to accomplish. And sometimes he sends people that distract us. Right. So he said, if you are in a relationship or have a friendship or going somewhere or with someone that is not taking you closer to your purpose, he said that you just need to cut it off. You know, you don't need to baby it up. You don't need to make it look good. You just need to say, boo, you ain't doing and you ain't going where I'm going. So it's cheap when we stop right here. And that's why I'm saying it's so important for you to have people in your circle that will support you no matter what. I'm telling you, friendship and support is is rare. But I tell, you something, about, I tell you something about the beauty about the people that have been in my life. They know nothing about me. Wow. They, so they just love you. It's like they knew anything about me and they were attracted, and I'm going to put attracted to the person that I am. And the person that I am, other than the Almighty creating me, the person that I am resulted from the situations I've been through. You're genuine, Alicia. That's what draw me to you. You were genuine. And the thing about it is, <laughs> guys, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys know. Miss Alicia, but she will she will tell you all quick fast in the dark. I'm like, what do you think she's talking to? She's talking to me. She's talking to the J like that. But I get to appreciate her personality and who she really is. And if I want to know the truth, <laughs> if I want to know the truth, so help me God, I would ask Miss Alicia. I don't know how to sugarcoat it. I tried. Listen. I tried, but it doesn't work. Miss Francis, Miss Francis, Miss Francis is on here and she says, so true and all saying every disappointment is a blessing. God always has something better in place and that she got goosebumps. Who is Miss J. Cassandra Johnson? Miss Johnson is the lady I was speaking about, but Miss Francis now, Miss Francis knew me before I was even born. What? Miss Francis is my aunt in Antigua. And oh, uh, wow. She she's she's come, she's joining in from Antigua. She knew me before I was born, so she can tell you even more than I do. Wow. Whether I was wild as a child, she could tell you everything. What I look like at birth. So, and she has been a rock too, you know. Thank God for technology. Mm -hmm. We are separated by distance, mm -hmm. but we're not separated because we have the opportunity to connect. And we have formed a connection in my senior years. Mm -hmm. And I say senior 
because I'm older yeah. than when I left home. <laughs> yeah, senior, you did it right. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm seasoned. I tell people I'm not, I'm, I'm seasoned. I'm well seasoned now. Okay. Um, you know, when I think about it and I think I'm about to be, oh, that age. Yeah. It's, 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 it's just a real moment. And, uh, and people talk about my grades all the time. And I say, I love it. You know how long I wanted grades? When I started getting grades, I would high five everybody. I absolutely love it. But um, <laughs> on the contrary, Alicia. Miss <laughs> Francis has been there. She's been a rock. <laughs> a rock, a rock. Well, I'm, I'm so happy that you have these people that are supporting you um, throughout this journey. It, that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take when we go to this next level people that support you. Listen, I always, listen, I got another friend, um, Apostle Pastor Tracy Griffin. As a matter of fact, not to cut you off, Miss Tracy was on you. I think she wanted to get in. You can tell her try again. All right. Come on. Come on, Apostle Tracy. Come on. <laughs> Vanessa, Vanessa, Vanessa is my age. Yeah, Vanessa is on. Vanessa, tell her, be proud of what your age is. Going. I am proud of my age. Okay, well, I let us know. I'm going to be 47. I am very proud of oh. my age. Wow. Oh, and I think right. I look good for my age. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I was just about to tell you about uh, Pastor Apostle Tracy. Uh, listen, now that's one woman who will tell it to you like it is, honey. She will tell it to you like it is. And I appreciate that about her because she was talking about in this season of our lives and all that God has called us to do. She was like, you know, for people who don't support us, honey, we ain't wasting our time. And, and and she made a post on Facebook, and I just I just had to put hearts all over it, and I wish I could have triple liked it. It was just so funny. But I mean, all of the guests that you had on were very inspirational and really, really got to the core of our existence. I mean, let's let's face it, life happens to all of us. You know, a lot of times we can't change what happened in the past. But what do you do from today moving forward? How are you going to use your life experiences to shape you and mold you so that you can leave something to deposit in the next generation. Um, you know, a lot of times broken people broke more people. Yes. Hurt people hurt people. And that's why a lot of people are around hurting other people because they themselves are hurt. They themselves are broken, but you have found a way to forgive. Now, honey, for those of you that had ever had, an unforgiveness issue. You know, like I know, it's not easy. Alicia, mm -hmm. so take us back to the moments before you said you called your perpetrator and actually, I don't know, forgave them. I mean, there are some people that say, Christians, child, I ain't going to never forgive you. I can never forgive you for what you did to me. How? Did you find the strength to forgive someone that had sexually abused you? How? And you know, Janelle, that's been my song for years. My song for years was, I would never forgive you. I'm going to find you and let you go to jail. I would never forgive you. And every time I knew that the person was in a position to, I, I, I would call and I would call, I would, you know, pray over it. I wouldn't forgive, but I pray over it that nobody else get hurt. I'm thinking about it and I'm trying not to, if I should just break down and get emotional. It's okay. This is your show, girl. Do it. But um, I was, in I, was in I was in church one Sabbath and there was a guest pastor and he preached on the topic of forgiveness. And I don't know if you've ever been in a service and the pastor is preaching and you feel like you're the only one there because he's talking to you. He's telling your story. He's te it's like that sermon was prepared specifically for me. And uh, I sat there quiet in the chair because everybody can see me now because the pastor talking about me. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to decide what am I going to do about it? And I heard what I call and uh, what I dub the voice of forgiveness. No matter what was said in that sermon, I can't remember the text. I can't remember the full context of the sermon, but all I could remember was the word forgiveness. And forgiveness kept ringing through my head. 
And I'm like, but if I forgive him? And I started thinking of the list of people in my life, who do I need to forgive? Who do I have a beef with? And I don't have a beef with nobody. So who am I going to forgive? And then I flipped it. I said, forgiveness is not about having a beef with somebody. Who did you something that you think that you need to take the role and forgive them instead? And uh, his name came to my mind. And I said, I can't do this. I'm, I'm not, no, uh -uh. I didn't do anything wrong. But at the same time, I know that the situation controlled me for years. And how was I going to free myself from it? And, that, you know, based on the sermon, forgiveness is not about them. It's for you. It's a whole lot. And to me, it was good, a good message, but a whole lot of mumbo jumbo because I wasn't going to do it. And I thought about being, dis I'm being disobedient. I'm here because I didn't want to be at church that morning. I got there late. The service was pushed back a little, the sermon part of it, because, you know, they had all the little accurate, the ceremony and presentation and what. It was pushed back a little later, and I got there in time to hear it. So something in there belongs to me. I need to do this. I prayed about it, and I thought about it. If I'm going to forgive this person, that means I have to find their number. I have to call them. I have to be the one to initiate the conversation. What foolishness is this? <laughs> Girl. But I had to pray about it. And, and that's something I did for about a week and a half. That's key. But the week and a half of prayer was not just that week and a half. It's been years of prayer. And my prayer was about to be answered. I found the number. I dialed the number. I didn't drink anything. <laughs> well, I we can talk about this, Miss Alicia. I was. <laughs> you was, you were so, you was in your right mind. I was in my right mind. Okay. <laughs> and I, um, I called and I told myself if I stayed on the phone long enough for him to answer, mm -hmm. I am free. I am free. The phone rang about. <laughs> the phone rang. It rang about four times, and on the fourth call, he picked up. And I said, okay, I can do this. He said, hello. And I said, this is Wendy. I couldn't say anything after that. It's like he was, he was struggling to figure who is, you know, and I reminded him who I was. And he got real excited that I, I actually called him. I said, no, it's not for you to get excited. I just call you to let you know I'm calling to forgive you. And I'm not going to allow you to no longer control my life. And he wanted to explain to me what I said, I don't want to know. I am on an assignment. And my assignment right now is to free me and to free others. And I need no explanation. I just need to let you know that I forgive you. And he started crying. This man born like a baby. He started crying. I said, don't try to contact me. Don't try to, you know, we're not trying to build no friendship. No, I just want to let you know I forgive you. Wow. And the minute I let those words out, forgiveness, wow. I was free. The lump in my chest, because it literally felt like it was a ball in here. I don't know if you ever played marble and they had a big, it felt like there was a ball in here. Mm. And I want, and that freed me. Wow. Wow, Alicia. I mean, whenever I hear your story, I know you need a most of moment. Just take it all in. Okay. Whenever I hear your story on forgiveness, you know, there's something that happens on the inside. I mean, I'm thinking it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of courage, even for you to be vulnerable on social media right now on your show with other people. But thank God now you are free and you're using your voice to help other people. And that is what Jen. makes this journey so amazing. Hey, Look Shan. Look who just joined us. Dr. Shan, by the way, honey. Hey, Dr. Shane. Hey, how y'all doing? What's happening, girl? 
nothing much up here working. Well, you know, Alicia here crying, and I'm trying to help her host this show and all of that. Um, we're excited to have you. We wanted um, some of the people that have been on the show in the last 12 months to just come on and, you know, share what you're thankful for and give us some type of encouragement, and especially for Miss Alicia, who has been through so much. Um, I'm so proud of her and I'm so proud of what you're doing. We just want people to know that no matter what you've been through, no matter how hard it is, as long as you know you allow the Holy Spirit to give you strength and to guide you, you can do this. Yes, Talk to the people, Alicia. Shan. Thank you so much, Ms. Shan. Congratulations. And I apologize for my tardiness, y'all. I was across the street working. Um, so but yes, I'm so, so proud of you. You know, your show, you came so far. Forgiveness, which is a, you know, a very powerful thing that we definitely have to do in order to move forward and for God to, you know, begin the healing process for us and allow our blessings to um, come in because that is so important. So I'm, oh my God, and my battery want to go dead. But I'm definitely, definitely, definitely proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep encouraging people and let them know how important forgiveness is. And, you know, you're you're such a great inspiration. I truly you appreciate you, Shannon. I can't even get the words out. <laughs> such a great inspiration. One of yeah. my one of yeah. my readers besides Miss Janelle. And I'm very <laughs> proud of you too, Miss Janelle. You know, I, I truly thank God for the both of you guys. Because both y'all have truly like dropped niggas into my life. And you know, I, I'm using some of the technique, the techniques that y'all told me to do. So it's it's truly blessing my life. And I thank you guys for it. Mm, I'm trying to thank you so much, Miss Shannon. It was it's a it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for joining today. I admire you. you I know we 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 met through Janelle, yes, but I've been following you, and I totally admire your efforts. I admire your success. I Thank admire you. the journey that you're on as well. And we're all on this journey together. It no is. man is an island. Yes, Not only that, no man is an island. My brother likes to say, mountains don't meet, but people do. That's correct. That's one of his favorite things to say. And uh, people do. And we're here for each other. And uh, I cannot help you being silent. Knowledge is of no use to me if I choose to keep it to myself right. and be selfish with it. And your knowledge don't even have to come from a book. It comes from your experience. And... Uh, I tell you guys, I, I came to Georgia knowing a handful, maybe about, about three, four people. And I have had a village to support me. A whole village. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, back home, it's easier to have that village because the island is so small. Mm -hmm. and have aunts and uncles all over. I have a village of aunts and uncles, grandma, mothers. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, even like you, Alicia, I'm from another country too. And I started out with absolutely nobody. Like, you know, just the people that I work with, you, you know, and God brought Shannon to my life. And I mean, just by meeting her, it has opened up so much or so many other doors for me, you know. So I'm, I'm very thankful today. I'm thankful for each of you. And I'm thankful for the story that God has given us, the voice that he's given us to speak to this generation. We have so much, or we have a wealth of knowledge that we can deposit into them because, you know, that's why we're here. We're walking in our purpose because we want to change lives. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's what I live for. I live to change lives. So thank you for joining us, Shan. We appreciate you. We're going to let you get right back. We're hoping that um, some of our past guests will just pop in and say, hey, let us know what they are thankful for and give a big, big shout out to Miss Alicia. Yeah. I'm going to try and keep my emotions together. 
<laughs> As I said, congratulations again. Thanks, hon. This is just the beginning. Know that you're mm -hmm. gonna, you know, God is, is, you know, He's taking you on this journey, and you're gonna go far. Thank and you. I'm just glad and honored that I was able to attend the journey with you. Thank you, my dear. And I look to many more, you know, events and days to come with us. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, Shan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll talk to y'all. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. So, Alicia, we got a couple of more minutes left. Yes. And I definitely want to give something away. Um, I mean, you got some people that are on that are commenting. Um, um, Pastor Tracy, we're waiting on you. You comment, but we are waiting you on you to join the link. link. I know I sent her the I sent you the link via text, which I, I believe she's gonna come on in just a minute. But um Jay Cassandra Johnson. You have commented a lot on this, and also Miss Francis, your your big supporters. And so, for you guys today, I want to do something really, really special because I know how much Miss Alicia means to you. And you know, this is a portion of her. You know, this is her first year anniversary. You know, this is this is a journey. It's not easy. You know, and I made the commitment, and as busy as I am with my life. I have set this moment aside the first Saturday in every month to support my friend in her her journey and the chit chat with the journey. Says, so have I have I missed the show, Alicia? I don't remember. We have you've been here all along. Been all here all along. along huh? Guess who is joining us? Who is joining us? Take a look. Oh, Miss Know Your Worth is in the house. Yes. Miss Know Your Worth is in the house. She's getting ready to come on. Um, we've yes, had the awesome, easy. we've had the awesome, awesome, awesome um opportunity. Yeah. Um, we have the awesome opportunity to um talk with Miss Know Your Worth, one of our um last few guests to go. So Miss Know Your Worth, what's happening, lady? We I see you screen. She, she in the sun somewhere. You see, she's in the sun. Let me try and unmute her if she's, I think she's on mute. It's, it's not letting me unmute her. Okay, it's not letting me unmute her. Okay, so maybe maybe she's having connection problems. I know uh, Pastor Tracy said she was trying to log on and it didn't load and that she was going to try again. So, you know, technology, but we got a couple of more minutes. Like I said, I'm going to tell you what I want to give away, Alicia. Y'all take a look at this. Take a look at this and tell me what you see. Yes. I want to give this away um, to one of your guests, Alicia. I don't know if you can really see. I know your phone is being acting up. Hey, guys, if you, if you want to know what to get Miss Alicia for her birthday, she need a phone because her phone is not working. <laughs> okay. I'm Thank putting you, it out there, Alicia. <laughs> hey, listen. I absolutely love birthdays because those are the times when you get things that you really, really, really need from really, really good friends. And so you really need them. Okay. And she need an iPhone, guys. iPhone 13. Uh -uh. But I'm just, I'm just saying, Alicia. But we want to make sure I show you our love and appreciation. So listen, I want some Jeanette. Oh, Je you know, Jeanette. Miss Bestie Jeanette, Jeanette, you and I have got to talk, you know, because I hear your name more than I hear mine. And every time I'm with Elisa, Jeanette, you're, there's not one time that your name don't come up, girl. So I definitely got to meet you. Jeanette says it's done. You see that the word of God says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and it shall find. Don't cause me to stop preaching on this show today. Preach, on, preach, preach. Come on now, come on now. Um, so yeah, let's get back to this. I want to give this out um, as a token and love, just for you supporting um, Miss Alicia's show. I, I really want to give this out, Miss Alicia. So I know you. I don't know if you can see, but I have seen Miss um, Miss Francis, and I have seen Miss Johnson commenting over and over and over again. They have really participated so i am going to choose the two of you 
I just need you to get your address information to Miss Alicia. And I may throw in a little something, something extra. Um, this is my new single. My two singles are on here. I just released it um, on September 18th um, at my birthday party. And Lisa wasn't there, but we're not going to go there. We're just going to leave it like that. But um, I'm excited to share that gift with you guys, okay? So, Miss Alicia, I was hoping that Pastor Tracy was going to be able to get on and um, Latanya was going to be able to get on. But I know people have a lot of other obligations and that's okay. But tell us a little bit, what can we expect? from Chit Chat with the Journey Sisters season two. Well, I've been thinking about it and uh, I've been praying about it. You know, mm -hmm. nothing gonna happen without prayer. Absolutely. I'm, I'm taking it to the next level. That's what I like. And taking it to the next level don't mean that we're gonna have a party. We're gonna break so out right. like that. However, even so though right. it's Chit Chat with the Journey Sisters, we can have a few fellas on here. They have a story. Ah, to they got a story too, huh? We can. That's something I've been thinking about. And uh, in addition to that, too, you know, a lot of times we think that we're the only ones in, with stories, but do we listen to our children? Mm. We're in a time where everybody needs everybody. Everybody mm. needs somebody. And just as much as we have to be, they have to be as well, too. What are they dealing with? Do they have a voice? Do they know who they are? Do they know the journey that they're on? Are they just living? And at this time, living is just staying in your house. There's more to it. You know, in the past few weeks, I have heard of so many suicides. Mm. And it is sad that it, I can't help but wonder, did anybody listen? Did anybody take the time to pay attention? Do we know what to look for? Hmm. Are we that in tune with each other? Or are we so in tune with what take, what's taking place in our life that we cannot embrace our brothers and sisters? That we're not embracing our own children? And we have to find a way not to... You know, when, when we make it to heaven, because I'm going to say when we make it, because we're going to all make it. Mm-hmm. Let him say, well done. Now, what did you do? How did you help? Was it just about you? Mm. We are on a journey and we have a, we have a mission to fulfill. You know, back in the days, missionary, and they probably still do, went from place to place and had all the books and had all this. We can be missionaries right in our own homes. Mm -hmm. But are we, are we intentional about it? Or mm -hmm. is it just about us? What are we accomplishing? This mm -hmm. program is not about me. It's not mm. about you, Janelle. Mm -mm. It, it's not about none of the ladies that comes on the program that joins us. And for the audience information, 90% of the ladies that join the program, I have never met. But the fact that all of our hearts are in the right place, mm -hmm. because we have a story, and it's not a story that is being, it being taught. They're stories from our experience. We can tell it. We can tell it without hesitation. And we could touch somebody. It's because there are others who are dealing with what we're dealing with as well, but just don't know how to say it. Just don't know how to vocalize it. Just don't know how to express it. And that's what we're here for. We're not here trying to, we're not here trying to make money. We're not trying, we're not here trying to make it to Hollywood or be placed on a pedestal. We're trying to reach each other, assure each other that we're here for you that we've been, it, been through it too. And we're still going through it because it's not an overnight event. And if I can find my voice and be not only a victim, thrive, survivor, and now a thriver, you can do it too. The only thing that's different from you and me is the look of your, on your face. But all of us bleed the same. All of us hurt the same. And men cry too, because they have emotions as well. Say so they hurt too. And so I'm looking to take it to the next level so I can incorporate everybody. Our young people are killing themselves. We have our age group that are killing themselves. And you wonder why you got so much to live for. No, they're hurting. You know, somebody said to me, 
um, there was a situation that took place and they said to me, uh, he 40 something, why he had to do something like that? He had everything. No, he might have had everything physically. You just don't know. You don't know. You just don't know. You just never know. And we need to be in tune with each other. Not just assume, not just look and judge, but actually, I'm here. I teach you how to forgive. I don't know how to do anything else but forgive. And sometimes I'm like, geez, that's all I know how to do, right? To forgive, no matter what. JDL, you know, I've been through some situations and situations where you'd want to pick up your bag and walk out. You know, this is it. I'm not doing this no more. And I find that happy place to keep going on because I've learned to have that peace and forgiveness give me that peace. So we're taking it to the next level. This is not the end of chit chat. This is only the beginning of chit chat. That's right. It is only the beginning. And Alicia, I see God opening up so many doors. I see you gracing so many platforms. I see God using you. I mean, it's so many different organizations because your voice is going to be able to reach people that a lot of other voices can. Number one, you're genuine. You're not doing it for self gain. You're not doing it for popularity. You are really coming from a place of being genuine and really wanting to see true transformation in this next generation. Um, and I am very excited for where God is taking you, where he's taking chit chat with the journey sisters. I know you've got a lot of stuff, um, a lot of stuff you have in the oven right now that's cooking and baking. And we are about to see the vision that you have carried it come to pass that you're going to give birth to. And I'm truly excited as your friend to share that. Miss Jeanette, Miss Jeanette, <laughs> are you jealous? She asked if you're jealous. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we know that our time is up and, you know, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful to be given an opportunity to do what I love. I love hosting. This is right up my alley. And I absolutely love it. I love coaching people, you know, trying to find out who you are, why you are, and what God has called you to do so that you can walk in it, so that you can live a fulfilled life, doing what you know you were called to do, rather wasting time, doing what you know you got no business doing, like Steve Harvey said. So Alicia, this is your show. I'm thankful for you. Thank you, thankful for, you. for this opportunity. Um, chit chat with the journey sisters. I'm looking forward to taking this journey and see, seeing where it goes. And I mean, I know God is going to bless it and really, you know, do some tremendous things. So I'm going to give you the final re closing remarks because you're the one that we're celebrating today. This is your anniversary. So happy anniversary um, and happy birthday coming up shortly. So all in one, and you're going to get your phone, Miss Alicia? Okay, now. <laughs> I'm going to get my phone. <laughs> yes. But you know what? Maybe it's a good thing I don't have that phone. Sometimes we need to step away from it for a minute. <laughs> we need to. But thank you so much, mm -hmm. Janelle. I appreciate mm -hmm. the fact that when I approach you about this show, about co-hosting, that you, without hesitation, agreed to come along with me. I um I talk about your work and I say when I met Janelle, Janelle has a gift for gab. I don't know how people can talk so much. But <laughs> Cause that is not me. You know, even just at work, I say two words and I'm done. I'm I'm ready to wrap it up. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a journey for me. So this in itself is an experience. I thank you so much for always showing up and not just showing up, but showing out. You have that energy. And I am proud of you, for lack of a better word, of the accomplishments that you have attained. You know, your book, your new book, your new CD, your daughter's book. It's an awesome experience. We have to find a way to not just feed into ourselves, feed into our young people, feed into our community. And you're doing just that. And I truly, truly appreciate you have been an inspiration. I thank our guest. Let me go with the, the, those who are signing in, who give their comments, their encouragement, their words of encouragement, their support, the calls, sharing their stories, you know, talking about my glow. 
talk about whatever they could talk about in order to keep me move, motivated. I truly appreciate that. And either way, anything that is being said, I have taken it and seen a positive in it. There's absolutely no reason for me to find anything to complain about. And one of the things that I've learned throughout my life is every time I try to complain about something, I hit something. I find myself hitting my hand, falling, hitting my shoulder, something. I hurt myself every time I try to complain. So I refuse to complain about anything. And uh, for those who are talking about, you know, the devil is on attack. Jeanette just mentioned the enemy is on it. He is. God never gave us more than we can bear. He has purposed our heart. He wrote our stories. And so I'm thankful for everybody who has had anything to say or do with my journey. Even if you're silent, your silence do speak loud to me. I am thankful for my guests who, whenever I spoke to either one of these ladies, were always so willing to come on board and willing to come on board without even having a relationship with me or JNL. And for that, that in itself is a true blessing. I asked God for six months, he gave me a year. And now that I'm coming towards the end of the year, you would think that my ideas of, no, he gave me some more ideas. So I know this is only the beginning. So I'm thankful for the ladies who have joined and not only that they have joined locally, they have joined from joining from Canada, from England, from Kenya, from the Bahamas, from Antigua. They have all made that effort. Mm -hmm. They're all on the same journey. And so I say thank you publicly and I love you ladies. We have built a relationship. And even after the, 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 the program, we are in constant, con constant contact with each other, trying to figure out how can we move on and keep helping each other and helping our society? And I want to say, last but not least, thank you to God. Absolutely. You know, before I get to God, I need, I'm, I'm leaving somebody out. My son has been a rock. Mm -hmm. You know, when I told my son about my story initially, he said to me, I'm going to be nervous when we talk about it, mommy. But I know that is something that you feel like you need to talk about. And if it's going to help somebody, do it. And that's all I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. He has been whew, my voice of reason. Mm. He has been my conscience. When yes. I do want to do something or whatever, my conscience says, let's do this. Because children are so innocent He's a teenager now, about to leave, but he's still a child at heart. And they're so innocent with their words and their action because they haven't been exposed like we were. Mm -hmm. Or if they have, they've been exposed in a different way, but they don't understand the depth. So they just say things on the surface, not realizing the impact that they're making. Mm -hmm. And my son has been a rock. When I tell you a rock, mm -hmm. not no rock that's shaped a flat rock that any angle I go to, I can't fall off. That's good. Amen. It's been a square rock. My friend Jeanette has been a foundation. And my godparents, oh my gosh, my mom, oh, all of them. I cannot, I cannot, no matter what the situation is, something was said or something was done that said, keep going. And I'm thankful for God because... He created me. He wrote my story. I just have to live that story out. I just have to fulfill his will. As disobedient as I can be and ungrateful sometimes, he loves us unconditionally. And we have to recognize that, that without him, we are, no, we are nothing. And the enemy is going to attack from any angle. But we have to know whose we are who we belong to, whose child you are, who you serve, yes. who wake you up tomorrow morning. Yes. Who's going to give you that, that next found that next dollar. No matter yes. what it is that you think you have, you did not attain it on your own. No matter what knowledge you think you have, no matter what direction you go, it's not you. And if we can acknowledge and be open and transparent as to whose we are, 
He got you. He got us. I, I, I have no doubt that he, man, he got me. I'm, I'm, I'm horrible. <laughs> I'll be the first to tell you that. I'm silent, but my thoughts, even if it's not an action, my thoughts, my actions, my words, none of us are perfect. But we, once we recognize who we are and who we serve, he's going to cover you. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you so much, Alicia, for sharing your heart with us. Um, we're just looking forward to big and better things. Um, continue to enjoy your anniversary um, of one year on this amazing show, Chit Chat with the Journey Sisters. I'm so excited to share this journey with you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, Ms. Francis and Ms. Johnson, make sure inbox Miss Alicia your, your information and I will send out your, your gift for today, okay? Thank so you. So thank you guys, as always. It's been a pleasure, Alicia. It is. It is. And everyone, have an amazing day and we'll see you next time on Chit Chat with the Journey Sisters. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you.